What's going on everyone? It's Jeremy. Okay, I made a video on this part of this before. This is my Lego Chernobyl reactor number four showing the exposed core and I added this base to it. Now, I got the instructions off the this main thing off rebreakable.com a few years ago. I built it. It's been on my shelf. You've seen it in some of the videos. If I've shown some of the shelving stuff over the over the years, I added this base. I actually added several things to it. We'll get to that. Um, you can see down here. I actually bought some two by four plates that are a trans clear, and added this little feature in the back with that little thing to push in. And what that does, there's a light brick in there. And I can actually make the uh, the core glow a little bit. If you get it just right, there it goes. Make it look like it's still hot or <laughs> smoldering on fire. Or maybe it's just hot. So one of the things I did, I made a few adjustments on this to make this fit. Because in a previous video that I think it's it's been out for a couple years, if you search Lego Chernobyl, <laughs> I think three or four of the videos are mine. I made the sarcophagus. Now, this is my own custom design, and I made it to where I could remove the top. And it'll just fit right over it. I know that looks a little Minecrafty, <laughs> if that's a word, but it's meant to represent the rust that's on the, the sarcophagus. So, April 26, 1986, the reactor exploded. Design flaw errors with graphite tips on those control rods exploded and what I've done is to try to make it this whole thing just fit right over the top because this was the hastily built super fast super dangerously built design that they came up with to just encapsulate and try to hold in a majority of the radiation until they could get something built which wouldn't happen for over 30 years and then here's our top and it just goes on just like that and then if i ever need to show anybody i can just take that off usually that one piece wants to stay for some reason and you can see down into it now this is how it's sat for the last couple years on my shelf totally fine you'll notice this little piece I'll tell you the biggest pain with this was sitting on the shelf and that got pushed in up against the shelf, which means after about 20 minutes or a half hour, the battery went dead in here. And yeah, it's not easy to get to. So I had to take them all, all the base apart and put new batteries in the little light bricks. So that's why this little thing's here. And that just sits there to stop it from being pushed while it's on display and not in use. And that's what we're going to leave. I actually had made just another little makeshift thing, just a little random little junk build, to just sit that on there in the meantime while I was displaying so it wouldn't get pushed, especially now. All right, so this is how it's been. And this is how it was for over 30 years. Now, the sarcophagus today in 2025, it's still there. They're dismantling it currently, piece by piece. But it's under the new safe confinement. 2016, 2017 era, that's when the new safe confinement was installed. Largest man-made structure in the world ever in history that was movable. Now, it only moved maybe 1,000 feet, a little over that. But nonetheless, it moved. And this has been sitting on my shelf or my, <laughs> my build table for probably over a year. You can see it's just a large dome. Probably the most versatile piece going forward with Lego. I think from a, a mock builder standpoint, if you're doing custom builds, these one by twos because you can flex this whole thing. Once you build something like this, you can flex it. So if you want to make a road and you make a hill or you want to make a round piece like a turret for a castle, you want to make custom fencing, 
this is the way to go in a world of squares and hard edges and triangles, <laughs> the world of round, this is the piece. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of this in the future. And here's the outside of it. I tried to match it a little bit the way the safe confinement looks, and it looks like I need to crunch it down just a little bit. There it goes. Now, the issue here was trying to... I had it built like this for a long time. The issue wasn't that. Fitting it, it just slides right on in, just like that. There's your issue. It's matching up that because this thing basically covers this entire thing. Now, I know they changed out the, uh, the exhaust vent chimney smokestack, whatever you want to call it. They added a smaller one because the original one had to be taken down. I'm leaving the original one up. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to be mostly realistic. And I know the entire other part of Chernobyl, the other three reactors, the Golden Hallway, all that stuff's way out here. I didn't want to build another two feet of actual build and a micro build like this just for this one part. So that's what we got here. Okay, so how did I do that? It was a painful, ugly, and weird trial and error method. Put a slope piece on, take it off. Put a slope piece on, put a plate on, take it off. And this is what I've come up with, which is not pretty. It's not exact, but it does get the job done. So we had to start there. And then you'll notice that's why there's two studs there. You can see we get fairly close. You can't get exact, but we can get semi-close. And that's why there's plates right here, or tiles right here, so I can just take this off so I can show this. Now, one of the fun things I did is I teach the nuclear science merit badge for the Boy Scouts. And in the scouting program, I just taught a, a class back in November to my troop for the very first time. And I have a, some 3D printed models of this. I didn't have this done, so I didn't bring it. But showing how the reactor is, the sarcophagus, and then putting the new safe confinement on. And it's probably not going to line up perfect without me manipulating a couple pieces here. One-handed. Okay. So there we go. And there is our new Chernobyl build. You can see, yeah, I tried to do a little bit. There's got to be a couple little crunches there. It's not exact. But it's very close, and I think I'm going to call it good because this thing has sat on my table for well over a year. And now that it's done, I'm happy with it. The biggest thing is it hides a lot of the details, but I wanted to have this built, and man, this thing costs a lot. When you go piece this out, I don't know how many thousands, yeah, thousands of pieces this is. Probably should get some tiles and just put the Chernobyl lettering here if I'm going to leave it like this. That could be a possibility in the future. Thinking on the fly, I guess. So what do you think? Do you like it? Yes? No? I think for, at least for me, it's a great teaching tool to see how this is done. And you can even put a little dark spot here, or a couple black ones, where, or even the dark bluish gray ones, where... One of the Russian drones hit this um, in 2025, early in the year, which was a huge ordeal because it caught on fire and it took them a long time to get it under control. So, yeah, I, might, I could even do that. And then it, it would just be like, why is that there as a conversation piece? So, who knows? All right. Well, I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want the instructions for this individual part, Go to rebrickable.com if you want the others. Just try to build off what I've shown you. Or check out the other video that I've made. Or I've done a short on it too. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.